For both of you, uh, uh, you're both uh, actors, directors, writers. Um, dancers. Dancers, I'm yeah. so sorry. Um, which project that were you involved with that changed the most in the editing room in ways you didn't expect? Mm. You mean maybe as an actor that you see the film and it's different? It could be anything. It could be as a director, it could be as a writer, as an actor. Well, I think films, I think maybe you, you, you could speak to this too. As a director, the film doesn't change that much in the editing room away from your vision because you're kind of shooting it to figure that out. But acting, there's mm. times when you, you finish a film and you go, uh, and then all, it could either be a disaster or it could be a much better film than you thought you were making. I think uh, I think Warrior w was one that had, had – had, the finished product was so much different to the original script. That's because we were like – you know, we would rehearse a scene and change stuff, that, you know, to expand on a scene. But, you know, I remember the – your question brings up the first time I ever watched the movie back and was like, that moment – was from a scene that I shot on, for a different scene mm -hmm. and felt like betrayed in some way. Even though <laughs> I think it's one of the greatest tricks for a director to do is go, whatever makes the scene the best, if you right. get a reaction shot from someone that belongs somewhere else in the movie, just do it. Yeah. But I remember thinking, wow, how, how would you do that? You've, you've stolen what I've done. This I was is my acting art. acting over here for something. Yeah. Anyway. Fincher told me that one of the keys to the way he crafts a performance is he'll use take two, 34, 39, and 46, and craft it all together sometimes for someone's performance. It sounds like bingo. Right. <laughs> bingo. You know, and I'm like, well, whatever works, he clearly knows what he's doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Whatever yeah. happens in the edit room, I think, is about making the be packing the best lunch, you know? Yeah. Uh, last question before the, we get into the movie. Uh, what's the most nervous you have been the night before the first day of filming on something? Kinky boots. Really? Yeah, it was one of my first big jobs. I was doing a, a Northampton accent in front of a factory full of Northampton oh, people. Oh, that's rough. And day one was my big speech of the movie. And oh, I'm certain God. if you track down the trailer that I was staying in that day, there's like fingernail marks in it. And some crap on the yeah. floor. <laughs> uh, for me, it would be Oh Brother, because I'd never worked with the Coen brothers before. And I was nervous. Uh, and I was playing a big idiot. And it was the very first day of shooting. And I, it's a scene where John Goodman slugs me in the head with a branch and knocks all this corn out of my mouth. And I was playing him like an idiot because he's an idiot. And I, I did the first take. And then Joel came over and goes, yeah, you know, the thing is, you're the smartest person in every room you walk into. Mm. And that's the only direction he gave me. But it was perfect direction because, of course... Of course, he's right. Dumb people don't think they're dumb, you know, and and it sort of changed everything. But I was very nervous starting mm. that film. Question for you about this movie. Uh, after Perfect Storm mm -hmm. and now this, yes. how much more respect do you have for Spielberg and Jaws and what he pulled off in Dude. the 70s? I mean, can you imagine that film? The shark sinks. I mean, the hell they went through. That must have been, you know. Forgetting that you're shooting with, you know, this disaster. I mean, it's a disaster film. Everything was going wrong. But you're also getting just murdered by the studio, too. You know, so it's the pressure of that. And he was, you know, he'd done tiny, you know, mostly done television at that point and a, a smaller film. So the, 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 the pressure that he must have been on, under is just insane. Just yeah. insane. Also and it's a masterpiece water. of a film. And it's on the water. In, yeah. the, oh, in yeah. the 70s. It's so crazy. I was certain this this was going to have an element of disaster about it. Because <laughs> shooting from- Because I was directing it. <laughs> yeah, that. And <laughs> <laughs> shooting from a boat to another boat and just, you know, yeah. uh, that, we never we never went over time. Crazy that we never went over time. Yeah. And we did so much on the water. It's almost like he's directed before. We were prepared <laughs> because, believe me. Well, you know, listen, the other part was this is MGM before they were bought by uh, Amazon. And I was on the hook for any overages. Like, I had to pay for anything that we went over on. So oh, that's why we're on time. Yeah, that's why we're on time. <laughs> I have a responsibility, man. I'm fascinated by the editing process. I've asked you this before because it's ultimately where it comes together. Sure. So how did this film... Uh, get shaped in the editing room. Like, what what did what you learn from friends and family? And you're like, oh, these are really good notes. Well, we, I, I didn't screen any friends and family um, uh, before we finished the film. Doesn't have any friends. I have no friends, and I, and my family won't talk to me. So it just really doesn't work. My children had some notes, but that was mostly poo. Don't poo. 
<laughs> you know what? I had this amazing editor named Tanya Swirling, who I've worked with a few times. She did Tender Bar. She did uh, Catch-22 with us. And the challenge for us was our the last race in particular was we cut it with about 150 cuts in the race. And we sat there and watched it, and it wasn't exciting. And as much as we really worked hard in the and using the camera as a, a tool to make it exciting, we realized that we needed to triple it. And by the end, I think we were at 500 cuts in that last race just to create that kind of energy. Um, so she's an extraordinary editor, and I hope people pay attention to how good she is. Last question for both of you, individual. Um, I'm always excited when you and David work together, so I'm curious what you can tease about Wizards. Mm. And and I've mentioned this in previous times I've spoken to you, I'm a big fan of when you're acting, mm. and I'm incredibly excited uh, for John Watts' movie that you're doing with Brad Pitt, yeah. because it's you and Brad Pitt, and it's John Watts. Yep. So can you both, can you talk about that project and why you're excited for people to see it. I'll, I'll tell you one thing about Wizards. I'm, I'm going to get off the plane in Sydney and go to a, a cast and crew uh, screening of it. It potentially is going to match uh, uh, the 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 vomit scene in uh, Ruben Oslin's. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Triangle of Sadness. There's a scene in it that I, <laughs> clearly we will talk about when we see it. Audiences tonight. are going to be throwing up. Yeah. Good. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it's sort of, well, it's our fault, you know, obviously, because yeah. we sat down and we wrote the story together. But it, it's a, it's a I batshit wait. crazy awesome film. And, it's just uh, going to be so much fun. I'll tell you, I'm a huge, never knew much about him before. Franz Rogowski yeah. is unbelievably cool. Pete Davidson, yes, I knew about, but Franz Rogowski it's like one of my favorite new actors. Oh, that's fantastic. German actors. That's exciting. Anyway, over to you. Yeah, um, uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, working on Wizards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. Uh, John, Watts is, John Watts is a genius, and he loves what he does. I mean, there's one of those guys that just, you know, he knows every film reference. He knows everything. He's so much fun to work with. I had to, you know, carry Brad, of course, because that's a pain. You know, he's like, always, always like, George, how would you do this? And I'm like, Brad, Jesus, just come up with something on your own every once in a while. Make an effort. Um, but it's fun. It's dark, man. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a real proper fun out there film. I mean, we've seen it and we're really very excited about it. Cannot wait for both of these. Congrats on this movie. I hope it's a huge hit for you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. brother. 